Audio input enabled. Video input enabled. Overlay disabled. Me talking like a git disabled. Hello and welcome to the stream. Almost. I always, always forget to do one thing, and it's a different thing each time. The thing I forgot to do this time was to lose my soul. Okay, so last time we were trying to find um, death rates from COVID uh, between any two given days, uh, once again to test the uh, sort of uh, nasty politically motivated theory that Sweden, because it does the right thing, uh, has more COVID deaths uh, than... Um, than uh, other countries. I just don't know words anymore. Okay, and we got frustrated, meaning I got frustrated, and so we didn't really get that far on it. I, is it COVID? Mac? I forget. Um, it's good that I it's good that I keep track of all this shit. Okay. Uh, okay, good. So we do have a days list now. I probably need to move these regressions into um. Uh, ooh, hang on. Reload, reload. Whoa. Oh, okay, yeah. That's one other bad thing, actually, that I maybe need to do something about. Um, now, I have to start SSHFS first, because that's where this file lives. Um, but I think... Yeah, uh, the, the problem here is um, Emacs is stuck way back on when I froze this, which was May 8th, uh, which is really bad, actually. Um, so what I need to do is a save without Emacs um, and then start up Emacs each time. And I think I can even get away with that because there is this uh, .emacs file called nothing. Um, oh, I don't know if I have session. Um, that might be save session. I might not have the session stuff loaded in, and you could save sessions, and then since the session is stored on the mounted drive, it'll come back properly, but we won't worry about that too much. That's just kind of an ugliness I need to deal with. Um, in fact, let me make a note of that. Um... Uh, back to freeze date data. Uh, maybe kill Emacs and even X term entirely and start anew each time using session state to bring me back up to previous day. I'll pretend that made sense. Okay, so what we're looking at today is, um, or yesterday. Uh, is we wanted to find the mean deaths per country per day, and I went through this little thing here, um, and I got really impatient because it took forever to do this, which which it does. Um, so this time I'm going to try it a little tiny bit nicer. Um, is instead of going through every single country every single day, uh, like we're trying to do here, I'm going to go through one country. I'm going to make a little function that does it for one country. Um, so that would be deaths over days. Now, again, we maybe have an issue with length of variables, which I'm going to pretend doesn't happen, though. And so this is just going to be like a, um, a, a portion of the list that I think we can even do this because country... No, countries is first, so I'm doing it wrong. So I have to do this, basically. It's make list... Um, make list... Deaths over days, country, um, IJ, uh, and country is not gonna 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 move in this one. Country is gonna stay the where it is. So J goes from I plus one to I guess we're up to one twenty one. Let me go ahead and update my COVID data before I forget. I already forgot. Let me go ahead and update it now though. Um, and this should just take. It's on the other machine because I don't this. Doing git over amount is kind of a little bit weird. Uh, it shouldn't be. I mean, it should work fine, but it but it is weird for some reason. Okay, all done. And I think at this point we have actually um, 
And I don't even know if I need to actually do that because it's actually going to be the length of days. Um, wow. So an older version did have days in it and somehow got lost, which kind of worries me. Um... But it might not have been inside of the uh, the formula batches. So anyway, well, let's just let's just cheat a little bit. Um, I'm almost sure it's 121. Uh, we are going to check in just a sec, though. So that's going to be that, and then I is going to go from one to 120. And be now this is a definition, so this I can actually do this with. Um, oh yeah, another thing of course is I have to start up R maximum each time, which maybe is not a huge deal. Oh, actually maxima to BC git. Nope, not co- whoa, I have a COVID-19 directory? Yeah, this is, this is fucked up, so I probably need to do something about that. I'm not going to, but I should, uh, because it's... It's, again, by program I used to do it versus the thing I'm doing. And it's, I'm just very, very bad about that. Okay. So let's see what we need. So we need to define deaths over days. Now we probably need to define all of this crap. I mean, we don't need to define all of it, but I use enough of it that it's probably better to, uh, to, to do this. Okay. And our favorite country, of course, is... Interesting. The United States. Um, so this... This could actually be fairly useful. Um, so, of course, we don't really need the, the, the list of... We want the, we want the mean deaths per day. That's the sort of the goal of doing all of this. Okay. And I get the feeling the length of this is going to be incorrect because I'm, I'm off by one level of flatten. Yeah. Um, so I need to flatten one, which fortunately I've created a function for. Um, I probably should have saved that before I... Oh, you know, I still can because I haven't saved it to disk yet. So I'm going to getify this because it worked. Anything that works, really. On my main machine, I actually have something that also automatically backs up everything every five... That's in a buffer every five minutes, so it's, it's even cooler. Um, so let's try this again. Now, the problem here is I think I'm going to have to do this. Uh, because the U.S. value will never change otherwise. Because it's a memoizing function. Um, so let's, that probably didn't work either, but I mean, it's, you know... Now nah, we'll do it for the only other country I know, Sweden. Interesting. Kind of the opposite of what I wanted. Um, so that does mean that clear for whatever reason doesn't really clear the variable, which I need to kind of look into, I guess. A clear symbol. Um, D assign. Let's take a look at our good friend, which is barely visible now, Firefox. Uh, clear. Um, oh. Remory, we're going to keep that in our little pocket here, because I think that might be literally what I need. Oh, well, that, that, um, yeah. So that's, technically this is an array. It's a very strange array, but it is an array. It's an array that's defined as you use it. So this, um, it's still going to be wrong, but it's going to be wrong in a more interesting way in the sense that, oh, come on. Don't be whiny. And don't be vain. Or else, my brother, I'm, oh, you know, this is, 
I don't know what the hell clear does. I mean, didn't give me an error. I, why is it freezing there? I mean, I know my chat's freezing, but that has nothing to do with this. Premature in, and oh, hang on, am I off by a by a parenthesis? Maybe that's what's wrong. Nope. Flatten one. This is the inner make list. Let me try just defining it by itself. Okay, no idea. And let's do this for the US. Right, okay. So I actually screwed this up, made this worse. So that's probably not what I meant to do. Um, now, I could try to fix this another way, but we're actually not interested in the... Um, this list that gets created here. We actually are only interested in the mean of that list, the average. So let's go ahead and do that. And once again, I realize I'm over, I should really create a new function and I'm being a jackass, but hey, that's how I roll, man. And again, I just realized that I, if I'm not gonna, this is gonna be wrong because if I'm not going to bother to rem array at first, it's not gonna do anything. Okay. Something is funky here. If I put this in here, it seems to think I have not finished my input. Okay, so let me just try this one by itself. It looks like it's fine. Yeah. And then this one by itself, which is fine. Is there like a space or something that's... Uh, maybe put another... <laughs> when in doubt, put another new line in front of it. All right. So now this should give us something that's a little bit better. Technically correct, but I think maybe I want that. Okay. Now those numbers at the beginning look a little weird because I don't think we've ever had 22,000 deaths average per day. So now I'm going to break this again, because we actually do want deaths over a day, but we also want um, Pomodoro time, but it's the first one, so we're going to skip it. Okay. So maybe I want this. Now, unfortunately, this is going to give me the same nesting issue, but that's okay. Um, also, hang on. Ooh, no, 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 no. It's not what I want. Um, so we want the mean, for right now I'm going to put INJ before the mean. That's what we want. We want the mean per, I don't know what I'm talking about, so, okay, I don't know why that extra, um, putting that extra new line fixed it. And I guess I should put an N in front of that. Interesting. Interesting, interesting. Um, and I'm almost sure my mean needs to end here. So that is what I'm doing there, so this should be fine. <laughs> I say I say as though it's I say that as though it's really gonna work, it's not. Okay. Okay. So maybe I have no idea what the hell I'm doing. Oh, that's that's not surprising, by the way. Um. Oh, actually, I think this list is actually going to end here. Wait. Country IJ, make list, mean, end list. 
I'm, by, I'm basically just randomly typing characters. You could have a monkey do this and do a better job. Not necessarily because... Too many parentheses. Oh, you know. Okay, so... That's the make list. That's the mean. That's the end of this. I don't think I need this anymore now, do I? Oh, no, fuck, 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 I've done something wrong. Okay. Now, the correct way of doing this... Um... Is I could create an intermediary function called death over days country starting at day M. Um, and then just do all the calculations from Dan. But I, I, I think I'm smart enough to do this. Make list. Okay, so da da da. So let's go from here. That's over days. Make list. Um. Ooh, that's not a list. Uh, death over days. Yep, there's something wrong here. In fact, this is where I kind of wish I hadn't deleted the stuff that I done, did before. I mean, I could use git to check what I did, but uh, what am I trying to do here? Uh, deaths over days country ij is just that number. And actually, that is, um, that's not a list. That's a number. So I actually want to divide by. So that's. So I want ij, uh, where i is going to be the smaller one. Uh, so I want this divided by j minus i plus 1. That's, that's what I want. Okay, so that's what I want in the list. And then I want j to go from i plus 1 to 121. End that list. No, 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 no. Hang on. Oops. Oh, no, that list is j goes from... And the outer list is i goes from 1 to 120. This is still almost definitely completely wrong. You thought I was going to say but, but I'm not. I'm, let's just see what happens. Let's just see what happens. That actually, I think, is correct. Uh, this is actually giving us the averages that we need. Um, oh, except in this case, we actually do want to allow one-day totals as well. So we do want to allow the case that j is exactly equal to i, which means we also want to let i go to 121, which also means we want to make sure that I have the uh, correct number of days. It could be 122. It is 122. So, yeah, let's, let's... All right, but these are differences. Is? is? Because that's over day... No, I think we can do 122. And yes, I realize there's a bet I should really be looking something up before doing that. And once again... Oh! Nope. Because of the way I'm doing this, it should be A, it should be J over I, not... Uh, J minus I, not J minus I plus 1. And then also, there's no point in having, because um, then we're dividing by zero, so this is what we actually want. And I think I'm going to just be nice here and um, give the floating point version of this. It's We don't need it as a, a fraction. By the way, uh, just in case somehow it helps by telling you, I've got the, so the song uh, Welcome to Duloc. Welcome to Duloc, it's a perfect town. 
stuck in my head. Um, now, so if we look at the deaths US, we should be seeing that there was 1277 yesterday. So these are the various averages given through various numbers of days. Um, there's a temptation to actually plot this. Um, to show what would sort of between what two days were deadliest. Uh, why is this there? Um, oh. Um, so I goes from one to one twenty one. There's no need to have um. 123 to 122 wouldn't even make sense. Okay. Um, so here we go. Now, the only thing I want to do is I want to move this number, the average, first, because I want to sort them. Um, so I'm going to do that now, incorrectly. But not on purpose incorrectly. I'm actually hoping to get it right. And it should go without saying, but I'll say it anyway. Um, the, the highest number will definitely be just a one-day number, because whatever number... Uh, we have uh, that's the highest number of, of deaths per day um, is going to be whatever day we had the highest number of deaths is obviously going to be the number of uh, of the obviously going to be the highest number that didn't make sense if you're averaging just one number by itself the highest day will have the highest value if you have to average that number with any lower number that necessarily will have a lower value so the highest number will be one day, uh, just a one day uh, number. The, low, the, the second highest may or may not be two days because they have to be consecutive days. So you can't necessarily take the top day and the second top day because they might not be next to each other. Um, okay, why am I not happy with this? Oh, right, because it's actually just a comma. Okay. 900 billionth times the charm. Okay, so we could, in theory, sort that. That... Oh, cool! We got it sorted by the, um... Nope! There's a reason that doesn't work. Because I have... The length of that is going to be the wrong length. It's going to be, yep. I need to do one level of unfolding. Um, and I'm, unfortunately, I don't think this is going to do it. Um, it'd be nice. Yeah, that, for some reason that unfold one actually makes it more foldy-like. Oh wait, did I do what the hell did I just do? Flatten one. That's what I meant to do. Yeah. That also is not going to work, but for, di for a different reason. Um, so what we actually want to do here is make this... I think we can do a flattened one on this. And for once... Because I'm actually semi intelligent not really, uh, pretend to be intelligent, I'm going to leave the original there and make and hack this one, because I think, and this should be correct. Um, also, uh, new! Because the flatten would apply to the whole make list. Now in this case, I don't need to bother with the remove first because it's. Yep. Flatten one, make list n of this ij, comma. Comma. Oh, that was a uh, from Bohemian Rhapsody, I think. Okay. And then. Hit me with your U.S. Hit me with why flatten one isn't defined. 
because I am not doing this correctly, that's why. That might also have explained why it didn't work the first time, by the way. Okay. Let's... And at this point, we're kind of getting to where we want to put all of the work we're doing into the, the original load. Let me see if I can move some of this shit around. Because portion of this is actually for this file specifically. The rest of these things are um, are generic functions. Now the problem here is my version of linear regression is not as good as their version. Um, at the same time, I don't care. Yeah, that's... Um, Oh, wow, I've even documented this thing. Okay. Fuck this. I'm gonna go ahead. Well, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. Really? So let's do this. Um, let's do this. Because we're kind of conflating the two reasons to use a formula section. One is so the proper formulas can be loaded for the specific um, for the specific program that we're looking at. Oh shit! Didn't mean to do that. Set the mark. Wait, no, I want to set the mark here. You piece of shit. Uh, uh. I'm going to do a control W, which gets rid of it. And a control yank, which puts it in here. Now, God willing. Um, yeah. This actually could probably go into the functional library as well. It sucks, but so does everything else that I write. Okay. Um... but I should probably go ahead and mention this over here, that there is an existing linear regression function. So I need to... I need to do something about that, but I don't know what. Okay, um... I don't trust Flatten1 enough to put it inside of a... Um, inside of the library. Uh, this crap here... I mean, it's garbage, but it doesn't hurt to load it. Because I do not like having cut and paste every time. Plus, it kind of, for some reason, doesn't really like it when I do it either. It's like... Um, it, like, hangs because the... doesn't qu isn't quite happy with the console output. So now... now. Unless there's a syntax error in there, which there very easily could be. Um, let's see what this does. Hit me with your best shot. Okay, not... Oh, shit. So, the problem here is flatten one is cannot take an argument um... Yikes. Cannot take an argument that is it's a double nested list, which is not what I wanted at all. Oh, um, let's see. Let's sort of make sure that I've actually defined flatten one. Then let's figure out why the hell I haven't defined flatten one. This is well within formulas. All right, let's see what happens if I try to call it. Okay, something has gone wrong. 
and it's possible that this file stopped loading at some point. So see what, let's see what countries is equal to. That looks fine. Let's see what mean death days. Um, whoa. Okay, that didn't load for some reason. So why does it get stuck up right here? Is it because of this little ticky mark here? I mean, I guess let's see if, if even deaths is defined. Okay, something went wrong. Um, and it didn't like this. All right. Let me go ahead and cut and paste this in piece by because I'm, I'm well. Hang on. We know that if we get rid of this shit, it should load. But let's confirm that. I'm also going to check in a text message there. Okay. That looks good because it actually took a little longer. Okay. Uh, so let's see where the hell we have broken this. Um, you know, I get... Oh, shit. That is not cool. That should be a... Um, this should be a function. Not an array. Now this is obviously testing one line at a time is not the right way of doing things. Uh, but in this case, I think that was the problem. So that took a while. Okay. So I think that might have been the whole thing. Actually, I'm, I'm almost 100% sure something else is wrong, but you know what? Let's... Oh, wow! That was literally the only thing wrong. Even though, in theory, I should have been able to, um... It should have been worked as a, as a, as a, uh, an array, but okay. <sighs> Again, not quite the length we want. Um... Pomodoro time, and I'm going to take it this time back in two and two. And we are almost done. No, I'm not done. We're almost back. And we're back. Okay. 
Let's see what uh, the regular one version does. That might actually be correct now. It doesn't look right though. Okay. Now. That is looking pretty good. Yeah. Okay, so let me go ahead and fix the... Uh, I don't think we need deaths over day. Uh, let's see. So it is flatten one after the whole thing. I'm going to go ahead and push this to Git just because I've made a lot of changes. And because I don't have automatic backups running here, which I might, which I might get. Um, and now we do not need this. So I think finally we are ready to do this and have it just work. <laughs> as, as if. Okay. So now let's see how many... This is deaths per day... Is this per million or... Now, this is just a flat average, actually. We haven't even done population yet. So if we sort this, we should get our one day, a one day, the one day highest total, which is like, yeah, between days 8, 98, 99. Uh, these, these are one day totals here. Um, two day total because 86 and 87 and 87. Oh, 87 and 80. But anyway. Um, so this is just, um, th this is just the total average, the highest and lowest averages over various days. Now, uh, I would be a terrible person if I wanted to divide this by the population of the country, so I'm going to do that. Oh, actually, let me not sort that, though. Um, so this is actually not very helpful because it's a solid number. So Sweden had its... Oh, wow. Worst rate was... Okay, something's wrong. Because the sorting does not appear to be correct. Okay, so maybe I overestimated the sorting here. Damn. Um, yeah. So actually, for what I said about the U.S. Oh, wait, hang on. Oh, yeah, it'd be good if I sorted that, huh? Because I just said I wasn't going to sort that. Okay, so the sorting is fine. Uh, the worst is 185 deaths, uh, which apparently happened between day 90 and 91, um, which we could check. I mean, just just every so often, to just to check, you know, sanity parameters. Um, I mean, it looks about right. Yeah, 185. Okay. So now, what I was trying to do this, and then I want to do this over population of U.S. Okay? Times one million. Okay. Oh, shit. No. Yeah. Because I don't want to take the whole thing over the U.S. population. That would be stupid. Okay. Let's do a let's do a little flippy floppy thing. Um All right, so let's create a second version of this and we will um so we don't lose our first version before we're ready. And this is going to be rem array. Da, 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 da. Or rem a rat, because sometimes you want to just remember a rat. Okay. So it's going to be n over. Yes, per day, per day, per day, per day. Is this the end of the n yet? Yeah, so over here, we want to divide by population of country. Um, and then I think, because we really want it in millions. And 
then we can do shit. I'm going to cheat a little bit by getting rid of the spaces between the commas, uh, just so we can get this long one line. Okay. Okay, very bad. Yeah, I don't know why I said population of quote unquote country, because <laughs> apparently it's a fake country. Okay. Um, okay. So it looks like our rate has gone down, I mean, whatever. Um, so our worst day in terms of, wow. Really? So we had a rate much higher than Sweden had. Uh, I'm going to check Sweden in just a second, but all right. Well, let's let's again, once again. It vaguely bugs me that 98 and 99 are also the um, alphabetically the highest numbers, but I hopefully that has nothing to do with it. Okay. That this would also be, of course, our highest. Um, okay, two six one two over population U.S. Um, still doesn't seem right. Yep, there it is. Times a million. Yep. So between, I mean, on the. 99th day or the 98th day uh, we had a death rate of almost 8 people per million just for that one one day alright let's fuck with Sweden now oh okay so they, they actually had it a little bit worse they had 18 deaths per day per million people on that one day Now, a kind of goal of this was to basically, for each pair of days, figure out which country had the worst, um, which had the worst um, death rate. Um, however, I've gotten bored of that now. So I don't think I'll do that. Um, and there's going to be some little country like, I'm going to guess San Marino, actually. That's going to have an incredibly high rate because of its very small population. Yeah, just because 176 you know, per thousand. But again, that's not... That's more because of they have a small population, not because they're very sickly. Okay, let's go ahead and reload. I don't think... Do we need to reload this? I don't probably not reload this. Uh, Belgium. But again, these are, these are over a, a long period of time, but... Um, well, actually, they're over zero to whatever the... Okay, so... Belgium had a high of 42. Okay, something is wrong here because it says... Oh, that's the total number of deaths. Uh, not per day, obviously. Um, this is a fake country. Andorra is almost fake. It is actually a fake country. It's not sovereign. San Marino, I think, is sovereign, but it's stupid, so we don't, we don't like it. Montserrat. That's in the Song by the Beach Boys. Okay. So what we've seen here is we can, for each country, for any pair of days, uh, look at... Yeah, I'm beginning to see why I probably should have done the function the other way. We can look at the number of deaths per day per million population. Um, and then that way we can get some idea of, of what the worst uh, and best cases are if we wanted to, um, and on what days they were. So Sweden, um, yeah, so, one, one second here. So Sweden, let's, did I, no, we actually did this, right? Uh, mean death days. 
Yeah, and then I, did, I created a um, a list of these. Maybe I don't think I actually did. Average deaths per day. Uh, yeah, that's those are just functions. Okay. Wow. I think I did somewhere actually make a list. Um, oh, Mean Death Days is the one I... Yeah, there we go. Um, mean Death Days. That's the one we could sort for. So um, let's actually do that real quick. So this is what will tell us if I did this right. So over the last eight days, United Kingdom, Ecuador, and Sweden is number three. Over the last seven days, United Kingdom, Brazil, Sweden. Uh, over the last six days, United Kingdom, Brazil, Sweden. You know, we're seeing the same ones, actually. Five days, United Kingdom, Sweden's number two. Last four days, Sweden's still in <laughs> number two. Um, Spain, Sweden's still in number two. Everyone, one day, they just kind of don't get there. Spain, Brazil, United Kingdom, Ecuador, Sweden's at number five. And if we just look at yesterday, um, Spain, uh, Sweden's back to number three. Spain is really getting killed on this shit. Actually, let me do the, um, Spain, Spain, really, that's 14 just, like, yesterday. Um, okay, yeah, 14 just yesterday, but what's the worst they've had it? Oh, that's not too bad. At, well, I mean, it's not great, obviously, but 20 per... 20... 21 people per day per million. Okay, so now I think we're going to go back to... Um, uh, no, 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 no. Yeah, we wanted to um, potentially add more stars to the ecliptic map because we're making it really freaking huge. Um... And I think I had earlier found a way to go through the H, um, HYG list without having to actually change it into a special format uh, for C. Um, but let's see. I think this is it. Okay, because this is the one that uses F open. And yeah, there we go. Oh, nice, P open. I am on top of shit. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Um, okay, so I, I could do this, and then, um, oh wow, this actually gives me, this is actually pretty nice. This actually opens up a CSV file, or whatever. Um, and puts everything into a different little array thing. That's kind of nice. Um, and then it gets all the fields, and then we can get whatever fields we want. And that is really, really nice. I, I like that. Okay. So in this case, the fields we want are going to be the right ascension and declination, but the question is going to be how accurate are those? Um, yep, that should have been Z less. Um, I declination. Do I care? And the other thing we could use is X Y Z, but I'm almost sure he computed X Y Z from um, R A and DEC, so it's not going to help us much. And with R A and DEC, oh, but shit! The problem is to convert between frames. We're going to have to go into three dimensions unless we can cheat. Um, and we could cheat because the matrix that converts from the eclip from J2000 right ascension declination coordinates to ecliptic J2000 uh, coordinates is a fixed matrix. So we're not looking over time, we're looking on one instant of time, which is, I think, noon on January 1st, 2000 UTC. Um, so let's, let's go ahead and do that, actually. I'm, I'm, I'm vaguely curious to see... Um, 
Ooh, hang on. Equator. I was hoping I had equator decliptic, but I don't. Okay. Um. What the hell was I? Crap. I want to copy code from somewhere else. Um. Oh, Constell 2. Yeah. So we want to do this bullshit. Oh, this is so hideous I'm going to have to change this. Because Const has constellation values. They don't have constellation values. Me. Okay, and we will need the... Um, we will need the thing that converts. And now I think the rest of this is just going to be frame conversion on the three basis vectors. Um, whatever the hell that means. Uh, here we go. That's not exactly what I wanted, but it's not actually too bad. Frame, built-in frame IDs, which I know about. Build a frame. Frame to frame to name. Named frame. Uh, two vectors defining a frame. Did we loop? We did loop. Um, I know there's a way to convert coordinates from one frame to another. Geodetic rectangular? Oh no. Latitudinal to cylindrical coordinates. And there might be... In fact, they might only give this as a matrix. Um, yeah. And because matrix can be state transformation matrix, that might literally be what I need, actually. But I'm going to try going for the simpler one, which is just position trace, uh, uh, position matrix. Vector transpose, nope. Transpose matrix, nope. Transpose matrix in general. Determinant. Diagonalize. Euler angles to matrix. Trim the identity matrix. Okay. All right, Pomodoro time. I will be back in two and two. And we are almost back. And give me a second here. I'm reading some mail. I'm bored. Okay. Now, I think it's called a transformation matrix. Well, 
Yeah, there it is. Transfer. So this is the matrix we're going to get back uh, from, I think these are both frames, at, yep. Now, I'm going to do this, and it because these are fixed frames, ET should not matter. But I'm going to do it with different ETs because on board. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and declare a matrix. Um, well, let's even call it rotate. Um, it's a three by three matrix, right? Yeah. Um, okay. Wow, this could be like trivial. So we want to go from the coordinates we have to the ones we want. We try to et rotate printf. Am I going to be nice? No, I'm probably not. Well, all right, I will. There's got to be a better way of doing this. You know, actually, I'm going to be very, very lazy here. Um, I think we need a space, though. This is this is sort of the insanely excessively uh, so I is the row and then J is the column. We do not want to print a new line here. But then after we've printed all the J's, and we do want to print a new line, we don't even need print F for that, but we can do it. Um now if this thing works, I will be pretty damn impressed with myself. I mean, I am excessively impressed with myself anyway. Oh my god. Oh no, sorry, that's the wrong one. BC equator to ecliptic. Interesting. Yeah, this would have been good if I set up the loop, loop correctly. Okay. So this is actually not unexpected because the, the point where the equator and the ecliptic meet, they agree on the coordinate system there. And so the other ones, and this is a rotation matrix, as you can see there's a cross there. But now the question is, what if we take ET to be... I don't know, the freaking large number. It shouldn't matter. Unfortunately, I was not quite smart enough to confirm that this actually compiled. So let me do something else here. Uh, and also it'd be nice if I actually defined it. So this might be overly simple. Okay, and then we're going to do that again. Although this looks exactly identical. We're going to throw two more zeros, uh, two more nines at the end of this. Could throw two more zeros, almost the same thing. Yeah. This is a fixed matrix, and I, and I did expect that. Um, if it weren't fixed, we'd still be using ET0, because that is the... Uh, 2000 epoch. But because we're going between two matrix T's that are fixed, not an issue. So now, what we could do... Now, first thing we need to do is save this to Git. So I've done that. So now... So we actually just, this matrix is going to be our, like, the matrix that we need. Um, so now we just basically need to read, uh, um, 
the uh, the HYG data file, and the only real issue is whether we're going to use um, the XYZ coordinates uh, the guy pr provides, or we use RA and declination, convert them ourselves, do a frame transform, and then convert them back into um, into uh, not well. I mean, ecliptic longitude and latitude. So let's boogie with this. Okay. We do not need to define ET here. So we'll do this. Now we're gonna open now we're gonna do the thing that's the hard thing. Uh, this is obviously not gonna do what we want because uh, this is to do something totally different. But let's we don't even need to print the header lines, do we? Okay, so we open that. Uh, we do not need to do that. Uh, this is a very ugly looking CSV. Okay. And so at the end of this... Oh. Why do I need that? So at the end of this... Do I have... I probably need to define the S array there. Um, there we go. And the line array. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to, once again, uh, revisit my hideous past. And um, I'm going to declare these variables where I need them, even though I was taught to declare them at the beginning of the function. Um, okay. Okay, so we don't need the rest of this, but let's see. So now, is there another thingy here? Oh, right. So now, have one line. We do need to obviously do this for everybody. And then we might as well close off the, the main. Um, and what do we have here? I get the feeling this is not, we want actually different lines, obviously, than, than we did. Actually, do we? Hang on. Oh, wow. So what we need here is really only, well, the ID would be nice to have. Um, the magnitude, I probably don't care about because I'm going to spit out all of them anyway. Um, I think that's, that's actually, that's actually fine. Okay, all right. So now, convert RA deck to rect. <laughs> that kind of rhymes. Also, RA and deck, I'm almost sure, are in, um, I'm sure they're in degrees, in fact, and I need to convert them, but fortunately, I think that's just multiplying by, I think there's even a function that does that for me. Um... Oh, no, because it's actually uh, not quite what I want. So this is in hours times 12 times pi over pi c. And this is over 180 times pi c. So now we're in radians. Um, so now we need to convert from uh, spherical to rectangular, which is, I mean, I could have written this function. I can't spell it, but I could have written it. All right. Um, okay, so we need right. Oh, we'll just freaking call it rectang. I'm getting very lazy with my names. And the the radius doesn't really matter here because um, because we are not going to be using the we only care about the direction, not the uh, not the length. <laughs> That's what she said. Okay, sorry. <laughs> found that funny for some reason. It's not, but I found it funny. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and do spherical rec to C of 1. They want the colat. So this is this is where they're stupid. The colat is not the it's the pi it's pi over 2 actually. Minus 
the latitude. Don't know why they do that, because they're stupid, that's why. And then the RA. So in theory, I could have done that up here, but this is the latitude we want, the co-latitude. And then, of course, we put this into rect 10. And now, at this point, I am nervous enough that I want to print out. Um, why am I doing that? And so what we're going to get here is the ID, which we were okay with. Rectan 0, Rectan 1, Rectan 2. And if this compiles, I will I will save it to Google. Save it to Google? Save it to Git. If this compiles, I will learn how to talk. Oh, that didn't compile. Hang on. I knew I needed an I in there somewhere. Okay. Probably should have. Now, in theory, the only bad thing here is I might be losing... Hello, 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 hello! I did get your email lock access full. Um, I added you on Google Hangouts. I uh, hadn't heard back from you yet. I mean, you might have you might have done it, and I just didn't notice because I'm stupid. Um, did you want to look at your C problem here using Replit or something? Because I'm happy to interrupt what I'm doing because it's useless and no one listens to it anyway to actually help someone. It's a very rare opportunity that I have. And hopefully, I think I made you wait two minutes there um, before I noticed you were there. Um, so hopefully, you're still there. But please, if you are, say, you know, type something, say something, do something. Um, until then, I'm going to go back to what I was doing, but I'll keep an eye on chat now. Um, there you are. Awesome. Okay, what would you like to do? Because um, the, the thing that you described is actually, I'll, I'll mention it to other people if we're going to do it, it's actually much harder than it looks. It, it's not what you think it is. It's not as easy as the first problem. Um... So I'm going to discuss these in a minute if, we, if we're going to go this way with it. Uh, Oxassful uh, gave me, um, asked me for help. Well, he had assigned two problems, and he was able to solve one very easily and asked me for help on the second one. And the problems are of disproportionate difficulty. I mean, they're, they're sort of placed like one next to the other, um, but, but they're not really of the same difficulty at all. So shall we do your problem, or have you figured it out, or do you want to, I don't know. Do you want to dance? Do you want me to sing the Duloc song? I think it's copyrighted, but I don't know if anyone cares. There's even a creepy version of the song that I, I don't really know where it's from. I mean, it says it's from Animated, but I don't know what that is. So, anyway. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Okay. That's still pretty low level. Okay. So, would you like help with that? Have you figured it out? Uh, do you want to mint? Do you have other questions? Uh, do you believe in... Uh, are you a happy person? Do you believe in the Lord? Uh, I can keep asking questions. Where were you on the night of... Who did you meet? What was that box you left with? Have you ever seen... Um... Have you ever seen a goose kissing a moose down by the bay, down by the bay? Please, please stop me from singing. Where the watermelons grow, back to my home, I dare not go. For if I do, my mother will say. Have you ever seen a moose kissing a goose? Have you ever seen a... I forgot. I forgot the song is. It's a. It, this is one of the few public domain songs, so I don't think it's an issue. Okay, uh, still waiting. Sorry, I don't mean to put it on you. It just. Um, I hate singing. And. Uh, okay, let's briefly go back to what I was doing here, but I am keeping an eye on chat. Okay, um, so let's do this to the last. Okay. So the only thing I'm worried about here is that we might have a loss of precision because... Oh, here we go, here we go, here we go. 
Twitch. Oh, wow. I do. I was having some problem with chat earlier yesterday and the day before yesterday, and someone told me that my stream is looking okay, but the the titch uh, the titch the Twitch chat was not doing okay. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that you didn't pass it. Um, uh, I, I, again, I don't know if if you solved that problem or you're now looking at a different exam, or your failure means that you have given up on computer science, which would be a bad idea. Um, so the reason I'm tempted is because, like I said, we could we could make these. Um, I promised to get this, didn't I? Let me do that. Okay, it's all nice and gitted now. Um, so let me actually make this. Uh, I honestly, I don't think this is going to do anything. Really? I'm almost sure this is wrong too, actually. Because I think that's actually going to be... Yeah, that's mod. That's not going to be... Uh, is there really... Oh, I could just say 1E9, can I? <laughs> I keep forgetting. Okay. I don't know why, but for some reason these numbers make me happier. Um, so now we need to multiply them by a matrix. Um, so for once I'm actually going to comment my code. Um, we already know what the matrix is. We have it. It's rotate. But let's see if we do matrix multiplication, I'm sure, is defined here. Okay, go, 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 go. Yeah, I mean, again, if you need help, let me know what you need help with. That's that's where I'm going with this. Because uh, I want to be able to help at least one person um, every 10 years. And it's been like 27 years, so a little bit behind. Oh, they say time. Uh, yeah, hang on. Ma it's matrix times a vector, not multiplied. MXV, and I'm sure I've used this function before. Um, yeah. And so we'll say. Um, it is Pomodoro time, but I think I'm going to skip this because we have a visitor, a, a beloved guest. And we want to actually. M we're on the verge of helping someone, which is pretty damn dangerous. Yeah, I know it's Pomodoro. I'm going to skip it. Uh, hang on. I know what we're doing here. Vin and V out, not Vin out. So Vin is going to be the vector we're putting in, which we already have. V out is the one we need. So it's going to be V out 3. Uh, obviously, we don't need to be printing this out. Uh, I mean, we, we, can't, we can't for right now. MXVC. Um, the matrix, the input and the output. Rotate. The input is rectan and the output is V out. And then we can print it after we've V outed it. Although, again, that's not really going to be the interesting thing. The interesting thing is we're going to have to convert it back into. Um, In fact, I'm so bored, I'm not even going to bother to do that. I'm going to go straight from, um, whoa. I'll just go back right into, uh, 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 the spherical coordinates. Back to spherical. And that is going to be the function, as you might guess, rexf. And I'm sure I'm going to have it, yeah, because I've used it before. Not not surprising at all. Let's copy this here. And once again, I think it returns the colat because engineers are stupid. Yeah, okay. That's not a problem, though. Um, and then the next question is, do I want to convert it to degrees, or do I not care? 
I mean, it'd be nice for comparison's sake. But I can just do that in the print. Okay. Um, so we need... I'll even be nice and call them spice doubles. R colat, you know, R colat lawn. Rectangular back to spherical. We have V out is our vector. R colat lawn. And we're going to print that. Oh, wow. Actually. So we started out with RA to declination, which we converted. <laughs> We're going to end up converting it back. Because this is definitely coming out in radians. Um, all right, so let's convert RA back. That's kind of stupid, though. All right. Over pi times 12. Declination over pi times 180. Um, longitude over pi over c. So this converts it to hours, which we don't even use in ecliptic coordinates, but whatever. Now the only the only sort of ugliness here is um, we have to do another conversion on this, which is I wonder if you convert col. No, I'm not going to risk that. Colat. Um, so that is the conversion to the latitude, and then we do that and convert it to degrees. Oh, and I guess we're going to print the ID of the, of the thing, so we... The sun should be the only thing that's not changed by this conversion. Well, and anything that's very, very close to the, uh, where the ecliptic and the equator meet. But hey. Um... Oh shit, yeah, we don't... We send in the addresses so that it can overwrite it. But for arrays, we can send them in exactly because arrays are their own addresses. Don't you just love C programming? Okay, let's see what this does. Um, I get the feeling we're printing out something we shouldn't be printing out. So I... and I... This is it. This is exactly what we should be doing. Okay, let's try it one more time. Okay. So the sun does remain unchanged. Um, why Why are we printing the sun twice? Yeah, who cares? Oh, because the header line is... I don't care. Um, yeah, this is not tremendously helpful. Because I have no idea if it's right or wrong. Oh, oh, whoa, whoa, here we go. Printing it only basic and sparse file and counting them. Swapping text in file in two equal parts. Um, holy crap, dude. Okay, do you want to do that on a replit? Obviously, you will have to participate in your own learning, which is sad. Nah, I, I would have enjoyed that. I mean, that's an interesting, looks like a pretty interesting project. Uh, so if you want to do it, great. If you want to do something else, let me know. Um, swapping text. Did you have, like, a code that you could compile? I mean, you, have, you could compile and debug your code, or you had to write it without actually having a compiler around? When you say sparse files, do you mean literally files whose actual size on the disk is smaller than the number of theoretical bytes they have because they're filled with fake zeros. I mean, sparse files do exist, but they're kind of, um, I don't know what a base, unless you mean only print out basic and sparse information about the files. 
Um. Okay. Oh, okay. Wow. You don't really hear much about sparse files these days. Um. Okay, but you did get to compile your code. You get to compile and debug until it worked. You got to repl your code essentially, because uh, trying to write code and just on paper without ever testing it um, almost never runs. Um, but usually they'll give you points if it looks correct. Nice! GCC minus G. Put in those, I think minus G is uh, put in um, tags for um, the debugger, right? But anyway, cool deal. Okay, well, again, offer is open. Um, although I guess you already took the test, and apparently, if I understand your earlier comments, you did not successfully pass the test. Um, so I don't know if you want to try this again, if you want me to help you get a better score next time, uh, if you're going to get a different test, if you want to learn something else. You know, really, I'm very open. I'm very bored. I'm very lonely. Just tell me what to do and I'll do it. That sounds kinky. And maybe it is. Who knows? Ooh, ouch. Uh, oh, sorry, is this the second attempt? Oh, oh, you haven't gotten your results back yet. Okay, got it. First attempt, you failed. You got close to passing. Second attempt, you've put in. You don't know what the results are yet. Am I, am I approximately accurate? I hope you'll pass too, dude. Okay. All right. You betcha. Anything you want. Really, I'm very, very lonely. Okay. So this should be a list of... Oh, wow. So this is interesting. This is actually a list of um, stars that I converted to ecliptic coordinates, apparently using hours and degrees, using a different program. And I don't remember what the program is, but I remember it had a terrible name. Um, um, maybe in my readme file. There's a very clever little program that does this. Oh, so, and that, this is not, the program that does it is not this. This is the program that wraps around it. Um, I could have just run this fucking program, couldn't I? I literally could have run this program. Well, I'm an idiot. Cool. I literally recoded something that did not need recoding. Um, I'm very proud of myself. Okay. Let's see if we can compare the results, see if we're even sort of close. Um, okay. All right. So over here... Well... Um, do you mean team as with other people or term project, meaning you have to get it done before the end of the term? And let me know how I can help. I can't do it for you, but I can help you like sort of illicitly. Okay. So star 25... Um, this is correct. Minus one would be, that doesn't look correct. Uh, the declination does look correct, though, and that's pretty much it. 34, 24.5, okay, and the first one is 11. I think I didn't convert this into, um, frickin' hours. Um, okay, so 
something's wrong here. I can't imagine they would be returning this in anything other than radians. Oh, good deal. Are, is it going well? I mean, is the project taking shape? Right, let me make sure that we get back um, Yeah, in, in radians, right? So why is this being weird? All right, well, let's compare. Let's keep going on this. Um, 43, 52 point, yeah. It's really, really suspicious that all the numbers in the this column are very... Oh, shit, I know what's wrong. Uh, over here, I'm using degrees for um, right ascension uh, instead, of, instead of hours. So this should be this. So let's... Okay, 25, and I don't actually do a, yeah, minus 21 is 338, um, so I'm vaguely annoyed at myself, because I wasted a lot of time, but not in a way that I like to waste time. Um, And I could get this to match this. Um, pretty close to exactly, but not exactly exactly. Um, yeah, that's definitely true. Usually it's one guy does the work. Um, so if I can help again, let me know. Um, So I guess I should convert these numbers here. Um, yeah, let me go ahead and save this to get, I forget. Okay. So I think what we want is the output. Oh, this is the output that we need for um, the ecliptic program. Degrees, degrees. Um, hang on. Oh, we have names too. Nice. Where am I getting the names from? I'm almost sure that there's better naming conventions than this. Okay, so the ad other advantage of this program here is it is giving us names as well. I don't know how it does it, but we can very easily tweak it. Um, oh, in that case, forget it. I'm not going to help you. I hate C Sharp. I hate ASP. I hate Microsoft. Um, I actually don't like C that much, even though I'm literally programming it right now. Uh, not a huge fan. So let me do something here. Kind of want to... I want validation. Um, oh, actually... I'm sure these are... I don't know how different they are going to be, though. And that's not right. Okay, well, that's... That's different. That's very different. Let's try 518. Yeah, that was probably a mistake. Thirty-eight. No, nowhere near it. Okay, so either I've done something terribly wrong here. Uh, not happy. 
see anymore. All right, let me see if I can get this other program um, to print out stuff like this, which is apparently what I need. Um, the magnitude shouldn't be too bad, because we have that. The ID shouldn't be too bad. Um, the only thing we, we need to kind of print out that it, it that is the name, um, which I guess we can see how the other program gets it. I'm going to guess it gets it from the... Um, Yeah, the only problem is I actually know for a fact that the Perl version is working um, because it's what I use to convert everything else and everything looks beautiful. So maybe I'm going to now um, uh, Now I'm going to forget where the hell I had it. Because the only thing that was wrong with it is it only was using a uh, magnitude greater than something. I've got to be fucking kidding me. Oh, here we go. Equator map, ecliptic map, hip to DB, tight to DB. Oh. Oh. Oh, that's the name of the pro program. It's called SCAT. But it looks like the word scat. Uh, also, um, the replacement for SSH that's called Drop Bear, I think, calls itself DB. So, you know, it also looks like a terrible program name. So many Polish domains. That's a bizarre... Con I assume you're from Poland, otherwise... That's just like a weird... I've got a fetish for Polish domains thing going on. Alright, come on. Where the hell did I convert... Freaking... Uh, ecliptic coordinates. I was literally just looking at it. Oh, actually, hang on. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and skip Pomodoro again because we have a guest in the audience. And it also occurs to me that I, um, the readme file told me where to find it, so. Oh. No, no, here it is. Hang on. Shit. HYG to DB. That's, that's a good name for it. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. Alright, how does this thing get its name? Um... So this is, this is all good. I'm trying to figure out where it's... If we can make the name stuff. This literally just come in at this one line and we're done. Um, but I want to see how it's getting its name. Um, let's see where it's getting proper. Oh, this might be right at the head of HYG data. Yeah, it's just using this field. It's, there isn't a proper name. It doesn't bother with any of the other um, Flamsteed number, the Bayer number. Um, which is sad, really. Huh. Well, I guess that's... There's, there's enough of them that have numbers. Okay. So, an unusually bad waste of time. And I think I will run this on the other machine, but let's... Uh, I'm not sure how fast this will run, but it's it does what it needs to do. So let me let me run on the other machine real quick. Oh yeah, it runs really, really, really fast. Uh, by the time I finish the sentence, it should be done. It's done. Wow. Um, 
And now the problem is some of these, um, I guess it doesn't really matter, but not everything here has a, a Hipparchos number, which is what this is using, because of course this is a combination of multiple catalogs. Um, so probably, probably, a little minor tweak here. And again, I shouldn't be tweaking programs that are working, um, but I do it anyway. Instead of using the, uh, the hip number, uh, we should be using the ID. So I don't think that's a huge deal. Um, is there a reason we want to use the hip number though? I mean, um, yeah, I don't think we need the, hi the hash number the hip number, we just need the ID number. I know, something terrible is going to happen now and I'm going to say, oh shit. Yeah, I know. That's why I don't like Unity that much either. One day I'm going to create a um, a gaming system that uses just good languages. Don't, don't ask me what that means. Okay. Alright, here we go. So this is pretty quick in the right format, it's giving us this, it's giving us that. The only thing is I'm probably going to have to BC um, um, it's, it's going to be too big. I'm going to BZ to zip it to see if that makes it small enough to put into Git. Uh, I know you can't see what I'm doing. Um, it is five, that's not that big actually. It's 5.6 megabytes. Um, I'll be zip it anyway because I like to be zip stuff. And let me go ahead and push it to get. Yeah, but it's more a question of I don't like C sharp because it is a Microsoft thing, um, whereas C is more sort of belongs to the world. But also, I just don't really like, I don't, C is an ugly language to program in, and back in the day, we needed to use low-level languages like Fortran, C, Algol, all that bullshit, because we had to program very close to the, the, the base bare metal of the computer. But now that we can use higher-level languages, I think that's the way to go. I don't think we should be going back towards ugly languages like C. Okay, so we now have... BC ecliptic coordinates dot text. It's even in it's even in um, it's even in GitHub. Okay, so now okay. So what we want here, this is the huge, huge map we're creating. Um, and what would be nice, mm, okay, so this is actually maybe not, can I, I can probably read in the whole file. Okay, I do see the new chat. I'm going to come there in just a sec. I should be able to read in two megabytes. No problem, but I'm going to double check to make sure I can do that. Okay. Mm, but still, it's, it's a Microsoft language. And inherently, it sucks. I'm going to go with that. Ooh, that did not work. I'm almost sure here it's split. Okay. There is a way to do this. Um, Well, one way to do it, which I don't like, is this. Mm, 
but it should work, so who cares? Yeah. Ooh, actually... I think even this will work, because they already end in new lines. Yeah, there we go. Of course, I could over here just say go through all one at a time. If I don't use all anywhere else, I will do that. Alright, let me go ahead and do that then. As you go through this... Okay. Um... So this is the part that creates the, um... Oh, I know. I, 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 under I understand what you're saying, but the problem isn't who can you... First of all, JavaScript, everyone can use it. Um, it would be nice to have, you know, a, a program that lets you deploy to Android, iMac, um, not iMacs, um, Mac phones, iPhones, iMac phones, iPhones, um, Linux, all that good stuff. But the question is, if I'm developing as a developer, um, yeah, that's a great feature to have. Uh, but another great feature to have is being able to program in a good language, too. Enjoy the programming, make sure everyone can use it. That's the dream. Uh, the, 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 the computer, pr the, the language that programmers love to program in, and also it can run, in some sense, on any platform. And there's, you know, what you call response, what is it, res responsivity, or where basically it looks good on every platform automatically somehow, because it, it sort of knows what you're trying to do, and instead of, you know, giving it pixels and stuff, you tell it, I want to show a frame, I want to show a window, I want to do some, some text um, justification. So... Um... Oh shit, this is why we need the hip. But that's okay, actually, because... Ooh, no, we do need that crap. Yep. Um... Shit. So the problem here is if we don't use the Hipparchus name, we're going to get our constellation screwed up. Now, is there a way around that? I mean, we could print the hip ID after this one. Um, really? I, again, I still think um, hang on one second. Someone who's actually vaguely interesting. I mean, not that you're not, but this guy's actually helping me out with some stuff. Um, okay, we'll get back to him later. Unless that's you. It better not be. Um, okay, I mean... But the problem is, okay, is C-sharp a high-level language. Is it the kind of language like Perl or Ruby um, or one of those languages, or even JavaScript, which I don't like, but has a lot of to recommend it, um, where you don't have to basically, you know, can, can, do you have like built-in hashes or, or uh, associative arrays in C-sharp? Um, who controls C-sharp? Is it Microsoft? Is it an open source? Uh, you know, um, can, I know you can run on Linux using something called Mono, which sounds like mononucleosis, which is a disease you can get. I think it's a virus, actually. Um, but again, it, it just feels like it's not built for Unix. Um, it's built for Windows, and so you know, it's it's not it's not real real computers don't, don't aren't going to handle it well. Um, okay, fuck. So what I could do here is add a field. 
kind of wish I hadn't pushed that to um, to get already, but I mean, it is what it is. All right, so we'll add a field here it's called hip. And we'll go ahead and pull it in like that. Okay, so let me go ahead and rerun the um, awkward. Run it again. Feel really bad about myself. Yeah. I get the feeling I'm probably going to have to change this one as well, so let's just waste some more time. And I'm going to just say the word modified here. So this should this should fuck things over nicely. Um okay. And so now we can load in all this crap, keep track of the constellation names. Um Also, let's for right now make this um, considerably smaller because I don't want to mess with it yet too much. Um, and for now, instead of 7 minus magnitude, let's see. I have to put, every, put my name on everything. Clip. Oh, what? Oh, yeah, that doesn't really help. Okay. Uh, one, two, three. So the highest magnitude here is probably... Oh, my God. Uh, I'm beginning to see why I really only really want to use the Hip Arcos catalog. Let me go ahead and go crazy and actually say 21.5 minus, because we are, we are rounding... But I get the feeling that's going to make some of the stars way too fucking big. Um, right, so if the star will go off the edge of the, uh, of the screen, don't print it. Um, blah, 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 blah. Right, and the rest of this actually just does prints out the planet um, stuff. Yeah, and that we need to change. So now, if this works, I will be fucking amazed with myself. I mean, if it, actually, if it doesn't have an error, I'll be impressed. Okay. Okay, I see what's wrong here. Um, actually, this should be an exit, but because uh, I'm not doing the printing out here yet, so that we need to. Um, yeah. Uh, planets, constellations, names, and stars. So the only one I don't need to print out here is planets because we're not we haven't computed them. And then let's be a little bit nicer here and say. Exit properly. Okay, one more time. Okie dokie. I mean, this is going to fail at such an incredible level. Oh, man. Okay. So, I, I mean, obviously, one problem here is we have... Um, stars are way too big. Um, but actually, that wasn't too bad except for that one thing. So, obviously, 21 minus was a bad idea. Ooh, and the bad... The welcome to chat room means I got 
bad connectivity because it thinks I got disconnected for a while. So let's, let me actually, let me put this back to what I had it before, 6.5. Um, now the only problem is uh, Fly might complain that I'm trying to print circles with negative radii. Yeah, didn't like that. So I do need to make a check here. And I, printing a circle with radius zero is actually fine. I have determined that. Okay, I've really fucked something up here now. Oh, wait, actually, that might not be acceptable. Hang on. Zero might actually try to fill up everything. Oh, gorgeous, fucking gorgeous. So I'm going to go ahead and save this version, because this version now we're actually back to, um, back to where we were before. I wonder why they don't have names for more of these stars. So this is good. I'm going to go ahead and getify that. Okay. All right, so now I think we could slowly crank up the... Um, and we could, we could do more here. We could also just divide by two or something. And we could... There's lots of options here. Um... So let's do this. And again, we're looking at this right now at a, a, a very small scale. It's going to be at a much larger scale uh, later on. Because we're looking at it 16... Oh, motherfucker. This is fucking gorgeous. I feel like Narcissus. I'm falling in love with my own creation. Oh my god, there's the beehive cluster. It's fucking awesome. Uh, Pomodoro time. I'm going to go ahead and skip it this one more time. After this, I'll probably will go ahead and do it. Or I'll end the stream. Um, because it is getting to be... I've been doing this for... Oh, almost exactly two hours. Uh, let's see if we have any... Okay. Okay. Let's read that. Oh my god. See, again, there's a lot of things, let's say, free to use, not the same as being open source. List data structure is not as simple as JS array, so again, you know, it's not a great language. Uh, can be fixed if you know link, why do you need to learn something else for that? Framework like ASP.NET for web development, which sucks, ASP.NET sucks inherently, which is known for being okay, but with ASP.NET Core, it can be easily run if you install the necessary packages. Ah! Thank you. Again, there's a lot of there's a lot of if thens in there that I don't like. It's again, it's like a Microsoft controlled thing. Um, and yes, they are trying to be a little bit more friendly towards Linux because what they really want is they want everyone to be developing for Windows, but no one to be, uh, you know, people with other operating systems to be developing for Windows, but they don't want anyone using anything other than Windows. So I've got to say no, no go on that. Even if I were otherwise going to go on that, let me do that again. I like that. I like that so much. I'm going to bring it back up again. Okay. So the brightest star I think we have that's actually printed. Well, no, I mean it's it's not. I don't think Sirius. I think Sirius is too far south for this. But this Aldebaran is pretty big. But I'm, I'm not. I'm okay with this. And I think I'd be even more okay with this if these were. Um, this was being printed four times as big. So I am not unhappy with this map. I mean, that is a gorgeous representation of the Pleiades there. All right, so let's see if I can go... Okay. Um, 
I want to see how many stars I'm leaving out is the is the issue. That that's why I'm concerned. Um So if a star is of magnitude 9 or higher. Okay. 0 1 2 greater than 9 it's not going to get printed. Um And again, this is not the best way of doing things. So there's about 36,000 stars that do not get counted out of a total of, I think there's like a hundred, um, total of like a hundred in there. Hundred thousand, of course, I mean. Um, yeah, that's a lot of stars not being counted. Yeah, but again, like I said, there's so many bad things about it. I mean, I don't know if you're trying to convince me to use it, but, I mean, right now for me, the language I think is worth learning is JavaScript because it is browser-based, um, which means anyone can use it, whether you're on an Android or whether you're on a Spandroid, I don't know what that means, uh, or any, any operating system, because browsers are fairly old technology. I, I realize you could probably um, tweak C-sharp, but again, there's really giving too much power to Microsoft there. I mean, just stay away from it. Just use things that Microsoft doesn't build. That easy. Okay, let me see what happens if I move this to 10. Then I get down to 11,000. Move it to 11. Wow. So we can really kind of So, I mean, I think I'm okay with cutting off stars that are more than 12th magnitude. Um, yeah, I think that might be the sweet spot. So if you're 12th magnitude or higher, you don't get printed. This still might be too much, though. Yeah, because now it's, now it's looking like there's the stars are too big. Um... Yeah. Ugly? I'm going to decide this by basically looking at it. Yeah. And I, I think that's the only thing you need. I mean, Rust is going to come up eventually. Um, but, I mean, JS, as much as I hate it, is very universal. Okay, am I, not, am I liking this? No, it's still a little bit too cluttered for my tastes. All right. Once more into the breach. This I think I like. I mean, this is like, I can live with this. It's a little bit fat for the stars, but... I mean, the other possibility would be to... Um, to print, for example first and second magnitude stars at the same size and then that way you can go much deeper into this but I don't think that's going to really help because I get the feeling there's too many this is this is probably a good balance between printing out faint stars and and making it look shiny which is the whole goal okay so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go I'm not going to do it on this machine but I'm going to okay good because it's not working um, are you trying to convince yourself? Um, so let me go ahead and build this. Ironically, I can build this here. So now we're going to do the huge version that is, um, two hundred. Oh, I'm tempted to go higher than this. So if I use this, uh, then I will be...
and my tiles are at level 256, I will need 1024 um, times 1024 um, tiles at level 10 because, oh not quite though, because I'm only going 12th this far, so hang on. Okay, Ooh, this is ugly. Well, good for you. And again, like I said, if you're comfortable with it, that's great. Um, I've been looking for an easier programming language all my life, and so I've, I've sort of see C and any variant of C as being kind of hateful and not nice. Okay. So actually, let me try something different here. Um... Nope, that's not correct. Let's make this thing go further up in the up and down direction, which is probably a bad idea, definitely a bad idea, because we're going to get much more distortion now. Oh yeah, that is... Holy crap, that's distorted. Yeah, that was not a good idea. This, this looks hideous. Oh, and the lines aren't even in the right place. So I guess, okay, so I can't do that, actually. Um, make a note of that. Changing factor from one will break constellation lines. So apparently I didn't bother to do the constellation. So we can still do this one. And I guess that's that's going to be like a million fucking tiles at level 10. But, you know, let's see. We can probably do it. I mean, what was my actual profession in life? I've been a math teacher and I've been a, a programmer. My two professions. I mean, I've done other stuff, obviously, but not seriously. So let's... Oh, shit. I probably shouldn't have piped that to display, should I? Uh, because it's not going to work. Okay, hang on. It should create an image, but I definitely don't want to be piping it to, um, to display. So if this works, the next step will be to chop this up into 256 by 256 byte chunks. There are a frickin' lot of them. Well, we'll actually compute how many in just a minute. Um, but fortunately, okay, so, yeah, okay, um, so in this direction, the 200, this is actually fairly obvious, it's going to be 1,024, in this direction, um, it's going to be whatever this number is rounded up, uh, 86, that's actually not too bad, we'll have 86,000 tiles at level 10 for this. Okay, and I really don't want to split them. I mean, I could split them up here, but it's, um, this is a mounted drive, and there's really no ne reason to do that, so. Ooh, ooh, I want to see something. If this is small enough, yeah, I could actually copy this into, um, right into this fucking directory. And I'll bet you, I, th I think, I get the feeling that um, XV is not going to handle it. Yeah, image dimension is too large. 
I don't even think Faye's gonna handle this. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't seem like that. Okay. Display would handle it, but it won't be able to display because it it's way too big. Uh. Well, yeah, I have punch cards, the VT one hundreds. Um. Yeah, way before before the internet existed. Much less browsers, much less JavaScript. I remember Fortran, I remember Fortran where you had to put your variable type was determined by the name of the variable and you had to put things in the right position uh, in the line. So you had to like start your let statements at, you know, I think column three or something. And I'm probably on column five because I think the first five columns were reserved for something. But yeah, oh no, I do remember that. Uh, I do remember old technology, absolutely. I remember the Commodore 64, Basic 2.0, Basic 7.0. Um, you know, I remember MS DOS. I remember before Windows even existed. Um, so yeah, let me go ahead and push this uh, giant image now to uh, Git, if it will let me. And I guess okay, it's being a little bit weird. Should be fine though. Okay, um, the next step here is, like I said, I'm not going to take it here. Is we need to break, I need to break this up into uh, smaller images. Um, and then basically we need to create a leaflet program that lets you go through this. But then the sort of exciting part will be we're going to actually be able to create maps of planetary um, trails that, um, that you can overlay on this instead of having to see everything at once or whatever overlay it um, and I'm not exactly sure how I'm gonna do that I get the feeling I would have to do um, well that's just a damn good question I'm not actually sure how I would do that I mean I guess I could use a server that returns the right ascension and declination of or the ecliptic coordinates of a planet and then plots them, uh, you know, when, when, when based on how you get them. Um, wow. Some, some, some interesting thoughts, some interesting possibilities there. Um, no. I, I do use go to sometimes. Um, I shouldn't. I know it's a bad idea. But really, you're supposed to be using JSR, jump to subroutine, not JMP, jump and don't return. Um, but no, you, we, we tried to avoid, we, go to's are bad. I mean, you want your loops to end. You don't want, and you want your code to, you know, return, not just go somewhere else and never come back. Because technically, you're creating a stack frame when you do that. Uh, and if you stack too many of them, you can, you can smash the stack. Um, but I get the feeling this is getting a little bit, I don't know, you, you maybe you're just being totally honest with me, which is fine. Um, okay, I've been going for two hours and 15 minutes. Um, this portion is going to have to be done somewhere else, splitting this up, because it's way too intensive. Uh, even on the other machine, it kind of sucks up some time. Uh, but then the next step, uh, taking these uh, tiles that are created and... Um, and putting them into leaflet and then you know allowing people to put planet stuff over it um, that that could be the next that would be something I could do on stream four and four each yeah that those are good I don't use do while uh, do until all the while do I don't use most of those um, for each is a luxury do you have for each in C sharp can you actually go through um, an associative array in C sharp with for each. That wouldn't make me convert, but that would show that it's quite a bit more advanced than um, I think it is. Uh, if for each just gives you the elements of an array, that's literally the same as doing for over the index of the array and then just assigning a temporary variable to the ith index of the, the value of the ith index of the array. Um, do you want to get on um, Discord if you want to talk some more? 
Oh, wow. So you have associative arrays in C-sharp as first-class objects. Also, if you want to get on Discord and talk to me um, so people can hear you and you can be a little bit faster, I, I'm, I'm down with that. So we're now going to have a little debate about C-sharp, apparently. Um... And I'm on a different window telling somebody else that I'm also not a huge fan of Java. Or C, or anything. I'm not a huge fan of anything. I, I hate everything. Okay, um, if you have more stuff to say, please say it, because I'm, I'm happy to talk to you about this stuff. If you want to get onto Discord and do the whole thing with voice, which would be freaking cool, that would be cool too. Otherwise, I do... I, I, I shouldn't say I want to... I don't want to end the stream. I want to... Um, Really? Oh, I thought, we, I thought we had each other's Discord. Hang on. Uh, let me let me get over to um, one second here while I, I restore my Discord thingy mode, Judy. And I'll give it to everyone. I don't I don't care. It's Barry Carter number eighteen ninety four. And you can have it. Everyone can have it. Just everyone. I'm very lonely. Call me. Anybody can call me. At any time. It doesn't even have to be during the stream. Um, and I, we have tested this before, and when you call me, you should be on the stream automatically. Not because I set it up that way, but because my setup is so poor, it just somehow magically works out that way. Um, so we're going to go ahead and wait for you to join me on Discord. Um, well, I do have a Discord channel, too. Hang on. I don't know if I want to give away an invite to that. I guess I will. I don't care. Um... Let me, let me let me get let me I'll let me give you an, an invite to that. Hang on, because I really don't give a rat's ass if people show up here. Invite people. Um. Edit invite link. Never expires. No limit to the number of uses. Grant temporary membership. No, you can have permanent membership. Generate a new link. Okay. Give me one second to get this link over to where it needs to be. I, I think that was you just sending a... Um, give me one second here. Sorry, I'm, I'm trying to do two things at once. Which is two things more than I usually try to do. Okay. I think I see you there. Um, let's get boogieing. Let's get calling. Oh, okay, hang on. Um, are we... Are you calling me at the same time I'm calling you? Hello? I'm going to have to put my headphones in so I'm not hearing you on speaker, but that should take just a few seconds here. Okay, say something. Can you hear me? I'll type that over here. Can you hear me? Or I can type it in Discord. I don't care. La 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 I cannot hear you. I cannot hear you. Hold on, okay. Um, and I'm not seeing the little green circly thing around your name. So we. I don't know. Have we ever talked? I don't think. I know. I know you from someplace, but I don't think we've ever actually talked on the um, talked audio. So this is pretty exciting for me. Talking audio to a guy who I. Th okay, now you are. I'm on this Discord call alone. I'm going to hang up. And you know what? I'll leave it open. You can rejoin. Um, actually, tell me what to do. I will hang... Okay, hello? I cannot hear you. Oh, you... Speak up. Uh, 
Um, your little green circle thing is doing stuff, but I can't hear you. Um, you mean this chat? I've been having trouble with it. I don't know why. It's been slow. Uh, the stream seems fine, though. Um, speak unto me, Mr. Thomas. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. I can't hear anything. I just see the green circle light up, but it's just quiet. You might have your settings really low or something. Let me make sure my... Nope, that's that's fine. Um, crank up your... I mean, you know, slightly crank up your volume. Nope, still nothing. I mean, the green circle really got excited there, but I didn't hear anything. Um, tell you what, let me... I usually don't have problem hearing people. It's usually people have problems hearing me. Um, give me one second. I'm going to quickly mute and unmute my headphones. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. That didn't work. Something's wrong. I'm going to reload. One sec. Something's wrong. Because if I... Oh, shit, yeah. Hang on. Allow. Allow. Okay. Okay. Hang on. Something is something is going on here. Something is funky. I can't hear Discord sounds. Okay, heard that. I can hear you one sec, though. Let me get my headphones back in. Um, you can really hear me. Oh, now I can hear you. All right. Okay. Um, I cannot believe I talked to you in voice chat. I, I believe you have talked to me in voice chat before. I remember your accent. Uh, no. No? I, I haven't talked to you in voice chat ever. Oh, where did I meet you? Uh, wh what channel did I meet you in? Mm, in? In your Twitch channel. Right, but I think we met on somebody else's Twitch channel. Um, uh, Megalobite sent... Uh, oh, Megalobite, yes. I'm a Twitch. huge, huge fan of Megalobite. She has rated me twice. She is a wonderful person. Uh, everyone should go watch her instead of me. In fact, I think I actually mentioned her in this file. Yes, Megalobite is wonderful. Also, at some point I have to look up um, the cheapest possible food per calorie uh, because I said it was an edible wax. But okay, go back to what you were saying. I did not want, really want to say anything much. Well, that was a waste <laughs> No, you wanted to say that you th C Sharp has four each. Is that correct? Yes, absolutely. It has four each. Everyone who, yes, ever use C Sharp knows C Sharp has four each. Okay, yeah. and so it has associative arrays then? Mm, yes, <laughs> the arrays are pretty functional. Uh, not actually as much functional as JavaScript arrays, but almost are functional. So. So, okay. Because, I mean, Java doesn't have, uh, well, it didn't the last time I checked, have associative arrays. You had to sort of... Uh, well, uh, C-sharp also has Lambda functions. Oh, Way that's nice. Than Java. Now, Lambda functions are nice. I, I do like that. Uh, Pure uh, functions. C-sharp, there, there are Lambda functions, like, years ago. And in Java, there are, like, a few years ago. Lambda functions okay. in Java. Now, of course, I'm also using Maxima, which had, which you know, very, very old um, Lambda functions. Let's see. Um, I'm not watching you right now. Yeah, no, I'm looking at these Lambda things. This is actually not bad. But yes, yeah, is C Sharp open source? Because if it's not, it doesn't really matter what else is true about it. Uh, it's just similar as a Java, really similar. Right, so I, yeah, 
this is this is what bugs me. I I hate Microsoft, but not only that, I believe that they will try to profit from anything they can. Um, I don't know if you remember the controversy over uh, GIF or GIF files, depending on how you pronounce it. Uh, that the company that had the uh, patent for the compression used in GIF threatened to start charging people for creating uh, GIF files. That's interesting. Uh, everyone switched over to PNG files, so they they went ahead and released their patent. But, I mean, the idea was stuff like that can be very dicey. OpenStreetMap had that issue with some of the data that it was being that was being used was copyright or something. Um, and so that that's the kind of thing I worry about. I would much rather have real open source, real freedom. Um, and um, and actually, I like uh, interpreted languages, uh, which I C Sharp, I won't like most. Well, I didn't say PHP, not specifically. Um, although I've used it. It's not a bad, it's not a, it wasn't a bad language at one point. Perl, obviously, is my favorite. Perl is my my go-to language. Uh, and also, not just Perl, though, but also Unix tools. Because you can't really do that much with Perl by itself, but there's also a lot of programs people have written that take stuff from the standard input and spit it out, spit out something to the standard output, and that's very useful. You mean standard output, like in, in CF? You're breaking up a little bit. What happened? Hmm? What happened? Oh, your voice went faded out a little bit. Mm, so you mean standard out, like C standard out? Yes. Uh, it's, or something like that. Well, most of compilable languages are standard out. Yes. Not all. No, no, sorry. What I was saying is that even though Perl by itself, the language I use, isn't super powerful, um, it is a good way to connect code that other people have written already. Quite interesting. Because I don't think you need to write every piece of code yourself. Usually someone's, unless it's very new, Usually, someone has done the heavy lifting for you. Ninety-five percent of programming is copy pasting, anyways. Is, do you say wasted? Uh, copy pasting. I could you type that word out? Of, you said something like basin. Copy pasting. Oh, cut and pasting, or copy pasting. Yeah. Um. Thank you. Copy pasting. Um, I, I wouldn't go that far. I try to avoid doing that. But I like to, you know, when people write programs and compile them and they do something, um, I use the program itself. I don't copy and paste their code because I don't care how they did it. I just use the, pro the output of the program itself and then have Perl, you know, do whatever it is I need to do with it. Well, I have never used such an old thing. Uh, I'm from to the young generation. There you go. And I, again, like I said, Perl is not the um, is not the language you want to write stuff uh, in if you want, you know. But it's the language you use to basically um, use other people's stuff and combine it in a way that's useful. Uh, well. <laughs> I think I am too young to use something like Perl. Well, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Um, like I said, I'm trying to learn JavaScript now because that is the the hot new language. Um, it's not actually new. It's very, very old. I, I, I remember using it very early on and hating it. And then it it's almost... Older than me. Oh, Jesus. And then it almost went away. It almost died, and then somehow it made a comeback. Made some frameworks for them and, and also Node.js and stuff so that I, made it come back. I guess, but I remember when it was called ECMAScript, it was almost dead because uh, I never liked the idea of using a browser as a uh, as a programming tool. I, I think browsers should be for showing static pages 
and compi- you know code that runs on your machine is for user interfaces and, and actually doing interactive stuff. But but it doesn't matter if I think that because the rest of the world now thinks that browsers should be uh, like like you know self run programs that you run on your machine. You can save server resources if you write more stuff for a user a machine to calculate. That's exactly it. Part. That's exactly it. There was a time when servers were a lot more powerful than uh, client machines, people connecting. So you had the server do the heavy work. But now, you know, their machines are probably just as powerful as the server. You have 10 people trying to access your server. That's a lot of computation you have to do. If you can field it off to them, all the better. Uh, yeah. Also, with Node.js, you can use JavaScript for backend. Oh, well, yeah, but no, that's totally, a, that's stupid. I mean, I don't like Node.js. That seems like a complete waste of time to use Node.js. The big advantage of Node.js is it runs on browsers, the, the, the client side runs on browsers, um, and it, does, it can make their computers do the work. Node.js has neither of those things as a benefit. That's good, but you can literally write front end and back end in the same language. Not really, though, because Node.js does some stuff that client-side JS doesn't do. Well, of course, it interacts with database and stuff. Well, it's a server-side stuff. Yeah, but the language isn't exactly the same. There's there's some language differences. Uh, yeah, I, I have used it before. I have. So you so you understand? Yeah. Um, I mean, I guess if you want to learn, you know, if you want to learn JavaScript. If you don't know any other language and you learn JavaScript, that is a benefit that you can write both server and client code with it. Um, but you know, if you're used to writing server code in a different language, I don't see a reason to learn Node. All right. So, what's your favorite server-side language? It's also Perl. Everything is Perl. So, your favorite server-side language is still Perl. Yep. I mean, it's mine because I'm good at it. It's not very fast. I mean, there are issues with it, yes. All right. So, what was the last project you made in Perl when it was? Oh, well, let's find out. I mean, it's going to be in my GitHub. I mean, I made one today, earlier today. (laughs) Does that count? On this stream, minutes ago. It's really interesting for me. Hmm? So I've missed part of that. Say that again, please. Uh, it's really interesting for me to see someone use Perl these days. Okay, well, uh, I think you were watching the stream when I did it. I was basically trying to create a um, a very large a map that, uh, you, that you saw. I have seen you use Perl compiler of, from Linux. Yes, there you go. So that's it. I was doing it literally about 20 minutes before you, uh, 10 minutes before we started talking. And the only thing is now the map that I've created is going to be, you know, it's, it's huge. Um, and I'm going to have to split it into pieces using image magic, but that requires, that, that I don't want to do that on a VM. So that's the next step here. Yeah, uh, I had one interesting question for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, interesting for me. Okay. Where do old programmers go when they become older? Uh, I. Not to. I mean, there are. How to keep keep up with technology when you are actually getting old? Like, if I was coding for, if I would coding for twenty years in the future. Well. Will I be? They have many prospects in <laughs> in programming. When I mean, I don't know if you I'm heard. Like Fifty-five years old. Right. I don't know if you remember this, but when um, the, when COVID hit pretty hard, New York and New Jersey were looking for people who could program. Uh, I think in Fortran or something, because that's what their yeah, code was I, written I in. Yeah, that. Um, and then people are still, you know, there are still programs in Vax and VMS. Uh, that people are still having, you know, ported over. So 
I, I think there will be legacy jobs, maybe. So I, I think I could stick with pro forever. I, I mean, not forever, but if I wanted to go back into the workforce, there's still a demand for Perl because so much stuff was written in it and it's not been moved over. Oh, so the older programmers do work on legacy projects. I mean, they maintain them. That's one thing they can do. I can write new stuff in Perl, obviously. Um, I mean, commercially, you know, I'm not sure how many people would want to write stuff in Perl, but if I were doing, like, for example, a, um, a, a contract job, and they said, we just want you to get this done, I could write it in Perl. You know, wh whatever I felt was necessary. Oh, all right. Well, that's, that's, that's exactly what I thought. Well, I have one more question. Uh -huh. Can you guess my age? Um, I mean, I think you told me one. Early 20s, right? Uh, yes, you are absolutely right. So I'm what? 21. 21, yeah, I kind of think. Because when you said you were, um, JavaScript is older than you, um, JavaScript was around in 1995. It might have been o around a little bit before that, but JavaScript is 20. Yes, it's absolutely easy to guess when I said that. Yeah, that, that gave it away, because that means you were below 25, and um, you sound like an adult. You don't sound like a, too much of a kid, so I, I had to aim yes. over 18. So it wasn't, yeah, you, you pretty much nailed it, made, made it easy for me there. Yeah, so I should, uh, I'm the sa same age as Miglia. Really? No. I thought Miglia was older than yeah. that. Miglia no. is 21. That's right, she is. I forgot about that. But yeah. no, yeah, she did celebrate yeah. that whole thing with uh, being able to drink legally and stuff. I remember that now. Yeah. Uh, and, and I'm from the same country where Mikla was born. Aha! You're Lithuanian. Yes. But you're still in Lithuania. Yeah. You haven't escaped yet. Yes, I, I have been in there all my life. Right. So I have never been in the English-speaking country. So when are you going to move to uh, the United States? <laughs> I'm not planning to do that. Wow. So which country are you planning to move to? Well, I, I don't have plans to move to other countries right now. I'm studying. You want to you wanna stay in Lithuania voluntarily? Well, who knows? Right now, I... I, I I would rather stay. Who knows what I will do in the future? I, I'm the person that is hard to predict. Okay. I mean, I would think that, you know, there's other, even in Europe, there's other countries that are, I guess, more, um, I want to say profitable, but that's not what I mean. More, have better, I don't know, yes, whatever. There is, there is UK, there is Germany. Germany is where I would see you, because yeah. you, you really sound very German. Uh, I'm not German. <laughs> right, but you would fit in with the German people because you sound you have their accent. Uh, this is, people say they have accent between Russian and German, something like that. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> well, Lithuania is between Germ Germany and Russia, so there you go. I sound like someone between German and Russia. Is your language also between German and Russian, or is it totally independent? It, it is from the family called Balto Slavic. Ooh, I've heard of the Baltics. I know you said Balto Slavic. It has, it has some something related to Slavic languages, but it's totally different language. Like if I just look in my language to a Polish or Russian person, they wouldn't understand anything, even though they would think it's something they could understand. So there's a difference between the Balto language and the Balto Slavic languages? Uh, no, it's the same thing. It's the language family where it comes okay. from. Why are some of these in green? I don't know. Oh, I guess these are languages that aren't spoken anymore. The red ones are the ones that aren't spoken yeah. anymore. The reds are dead languages. 
<coughs> Interesting. So yes, I'm from the Baltic side. Or is the Slavic side? The, that's where my language. So that's where. Language. So that's where Russian is. Where's German? No, the, the, the German doesn't associate with that branch. Wow. So just the accent. So the closest that is to German is, is I get guess the Czech the Czech language, the Czech Republic's language. It's, it's also Slavic language. But uh, it's not it's I not think, close I, to German. Okay. I think, I think Dutch is close to German. Uh, you you think Czech is the closest to German? Uh, no, I think uh, the Dutch are close to German. The what? The Polish. The Polish. The, no, the Dutch from the Netherlands. The Dutch, the Dutch. Okay, sorry, I'm having trouble hearing you. Um, but the Dutch aren't on this menu, are they? Uh, so, 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 no, the German is, is also not in this menu. So right, right. I was saying, have, which of these? Nothing in common with Germans, actually. So none of this is, has anything. None of these languages are close to German. I would think Polish was close, but maybe not. Well, 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 Polish probably have something to associate with German language, but it, it is quite unique hmm. compared to other Slavic languages. Yes, it's one of the lexitic languages, and actually, I haven't heard of I haven't heard of Kashubian, Silesian. I haven't heard of either of those languages. Uh, neither, neither me. Sorbian. I mean, really. Oh, and I, I know where Macedonia is. I know. I know what I know where North Macedonia is. Um, that's close to Albania, I think. Uh, but really, everyone should just learn English and be done with it. Uh, me. But having different languages is quite interesting. Oh, it is as a theoretical study, but it just makes communication difficult. Um, so, do you think English is the easiest language to learn? No, it's not the no. easiest. Oh, it's no, definitely not the easiest because it's got, it is a bastardized language. We've got words from twenty different language roots. Uh, we have, uh, we have uh, idioms that make no sense. We have uh, grammatic and spelling conventions that are bizarre, but. What I'm saying is, um, I think right now, with the possible exception of Mandarin, more people speak English as a first or second language than any other. Yeah, my second language is English. Right. So that's why I think English should be the universal language, because it just, it, it's just kind of in that position right now. Um, where the fewest number of people no yeah it is the fewest number of people would need to you know obviously if you're going to have a world language everyone has to learn it but what i'm saying is that would disrupt the fewest number of people except big exception is the chinese perhaps that's that's my feeling for the except for the chinese and they are a huge population so you really can't dismiss them but um, yeah, I think that's why that's why it'd be good because it would it would inconvenience the fewest number of people. Mm. Um, so, so can you say a single word in Russian? Yet. Okay. Da. Understood. Da. Yet. Da. You can say the words, or can you see more? Um, uh, das vidanya. Also, you can say goodbye in Russian. Yes, and there's another one I know. Um, it means openness, and it was a big deal for the, the premiere about 30 years ago. A glasnost. Oh, that, that's more advanced word. Oh, yeah, but it was actually in the news a lot because it was um, it was a policy of a uh, Russian leader in the I want to say in the 90s or the 80s I think in the 90s um, I can't remember who he was he was the guy who, Gorbachev it was Gorbachev who did that 
no words, Svoboda. Uh, so, but you know, again. Svoboda. Do you know what that means? Say that again. Svoboda. Slobod, I do not know what that means. Uh, freedom. Ah, Russian. I did not know that. Did not know they had a word for that. I'm just kidding. Um, but, um, and I would not be opposed to having an invented language become the world language either. I'd be okay with that. AI language. Artificial, artificial intelligence, uh, automatically generated language. Say that again. Artificial intelligence, automatically generated language. Oh. That would be nice. That would combine That's all the world. Yeah. All the worlds that would be easiest to learn and combine. From different language. You know, I hadn't thought of it that way. I thought that we could invent a language that is structured and then computers could understand us because the language has no exceptions, no special rules, but you're pointing out it might actually be better for the computers to invent the languages in the language based on what already, based on the principle of minimum inconvenience. Uh, well, yes. Uh, humans. I mean, computer programs are kind of humanized based on how a human thinks. True. Do you think artificial intelligence is not is not humanized? Well, yes, it is it, also based on how human thinks because it learns from humans. Right. From human actions and also code is written by humans. Right. <laughs> so it doesn't exceed the human... It doesn't exceed what humans can do collectively. Well, not yet. They, they still are learning from humans. I mean, what else? How do you suggest that artificial intelligence move away from learning from humans? <laughs> I, I, I don't have any suggestions, suggestions yet because they don't really have any more advanced creatures that they could actually learn from maybe could become physically stronger than humans I mean artificial intelligence but uh, I mean what's interesting when, is you could argue that oh, man in theory you could try to let a computer learn by itself without any human intervention I don't know if that would work though well, well, it, <laughs> I mean, we could see that in the future. I mean, I don't know. have you read Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy? No, I don't, I don't really read Met so many books. So. Okay. It I, it's, me about that. Oh, it just has an idea. It said that um, they create a fictional computer that starts from basic first principles and just goes from there. No human interaction. It just learns by itself. Um, and it, it, it's not really, if you don't know the book, it's not, a, it's not interesting, but I mean, that's, that's the kind of thing, um, I'm thinking about. Yeah. I, I never really thought about that, but that is something I cannot understand yet. I'm yeah. I'm not really too anxious person, or, or what do you see, what do you see it like? So I need someone to teach me stuff. Oh yeah, I mean like that, that you're human though. Uh, I'm saying that a, a machine, if you if you started it with first principles, and let it just do what it wanted to, would it develop an intelligence that is different from human intelligence, but still useful to us? I mean that one that you know that'll outgrow us because it didn't have any human limit human input, le you know human limitations. Well, probably it could outgrow us, right? If it if it had more, well, if it has more learning force, it could learn from the best humans, maybe. But the best humans, again, the problem is who would decide who the best are. I mean, would it decide on its own? 
probably from their achievements or something like that. But how do you decide? This is the problem. How do you decide whether one human is better than another? Like we choose the president, but ultimately, as presumably the best leader or administrator, but clearly that process does not yield the best leader or administrator. Yeah, that's that's kind of the problem that could be solved if someone's actually smarter than me. <laughs> that is actually the best humor. Well, that's the problem. I don't think you can... I think it depends. I mean, there are people who love the American president. They don't think he's perfect, but they certainly... and others who don't. So I don't think... I think even the concept of achievement, you have to decide what's a good achievement. You know, is is building a wall to keep immigrants out an achievement, a good one? Yeah, that's good. That's kind of a difficult problem. So that process right. might be ruined. That's what I'm I thinking, guess. that if a computer could start from first principles, but not be sort of infected with human morality, what would it do? Mm. <clears throat> That's kind of a tough question. Yeah. What do you think it would do? I, the problem is, I think it would kill itself, because all of us are driven by something. And if a computer had nothing to be driven by, it could probably decide that it doesn't need to exist anymore. All right. Um, so that's kind of tough, <laughs> tough talk for me. I'm I'm not really into machine learning stuff. Here. I I don't like it either. But I'm just saying this is theoretically what would happen if we. We created a machine that was based on first principles, but we didn't give it any sort of desires or morality. It would probably just stop running. Yes, perhaps. It's a, it, it might not know what to do. Yep. If we gave it a little bit of love for knowledge, that might be enough to keep it going and basically trying to learn everything about the universe. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm, I'm, let's quit talking about this topic, all right? Okay. Do you want to talk about something else? Uh, no, I guess I, I have said everything I, I, I wanted. Maybe you have something to say. Oh, no, I'm all done. Remember this stream? I was going to end the stream anyway. Um, but I, I'm interested in talking to you or other people if anybody else wants to talk anybody else is listening to this and wants to talk, I'm happy to do it. But I myself have nothing to proceed with from here. All right, was it interesting to learn about both those Slavic languages? <laughs> All right, thank you for talking to me. I'm going to go ahead and end the stream, and then we can say goodbye after that. Oh, I think you actually hung up on me, so... Nope, you're still there. All right, goodbye for now. All right, I'm going to go ahead and stop the stream, and then I'll say goodbye to our good friend.